In today's video, we will see 10 Excel functions that can be useful for calculations or accounting purpose. Our very first function is aggregate. Over here, we will also see how it's better than sum and subtotal. I have got a sales data and the sales data is region wise. The data is for 4 months, January, February, March and April. Let's do sum first plus or equal to sum bracket open. Now I have to provide my range. I'll click on top. We'll press shift control down arrow key and the whole range will be selected. I'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. Now let's do subtotal plus or equal to subtotal bracket open. As soon as we opened the bracket, we got few options like average, count, count A and so on. Our purpose over here is to sum. So I'll go to number 9 and we'll click over here. 9 got automatically inserted, comma. Now we have to provide reference 1. So in our case, there is only one reference and that is sales of January. I'll go on top and we'll click on first sales. We'll press shift control, down arrow key. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. The result of sum and sub totally same. Let's go to aggregate plus or equal to aggregate bracket open. Let's take this to left. Over here, we got few options. Same as we got in subtotal. And over here also, we want sum. So I'll select number 9, comma. As soon as I inserted number 9 or selected number 9, I got few more options. As ignore nested subtotal and aggregate functions, ignore hidden rows and so on. In our case, we will ignore nothing. So I'll select number 4, comma. Now we have to provide RA or reference 1. I'll go on top and we'll click on first sales. We'll press shift control down arrow key. In case you want to select manually, it can be done. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. We'll go on top. So the result of sum, subtotal and aggregate is same. So what's the difference between three? Let's select all three and drag it. Over here, we got DIV error because in our data, in one cell, we can see DIV error. In sum, it can't be ignored. In subtotal also, it can't be ignored. When we come to aggregate, let's delete this and insert our formula or function once again, plus or equal to aggregate bracket open. Our target is to do sum. So we will select number nine, comma. Let's take this to left. Now let's check our options. In number six, we can see ignore error values. So we will click over here, comma, RA or reference one. We will select from top to bottom or you can press shift control down arrow key. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. Instead of one error, we got our result, which is really not possible in sum and subtotal. Let's select all three and drag it to March. In the sales of February, there was one error, but in sales of March, we have got error plus blank sales. So we can't do anything in sum and subtotal. Let's go to aggregate. We'll delete this and we'll insert our formula or function once again, plus or equal to aggregate bracket open. We'll select sum comma. We'll take this to left. Over here, what we want to do? Over here, we want to ignore hidden rows, error values, nested subtotal and aggregate functions. But in our data, we have got hidden rows and error values. So I'll select this, comma, array. We'll select our data from top to bottom. We'll press shift control, down arrow key. And my whole data is selected. I'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. I got my result. Let's go to top and hide few rows. Hide. And my result over here got changed. I'll unhide my data. Over here, I have got sales region wise. And I have got a drop down. I'll click on drop down and we'll select East. Apply filter. I'll close this. And we are able to see the sales of East only. In subtotal also, it's possible. But if error will be there, it will not be possible in subtotal also. Let's delete error from here. And we can see the result in subtotal. In sum, it's giving the total of hidden rows also. Let's clear our filter. Let's select this once again. And we'll drag this to April. Now over here in sales of April, we can see some blank cells. When I click on this, I have got one subtotal over here. Means subtotal of this. Over here, we have got one error and aggregate of this. When we come down, over here we have got one blank cell and when I click on blue part, we have got subtotal. Means in the whole column, we have got two subtotal and one aggregate. Let's go on top. Let's delete this formula and let's insert the formula once again. Plus or equal to aggregate bracket open. What we want? We want sum, comma. What we want to ignore over here? Ignore hidden rows, error values, nested subtotal 
and aggregate functions. Let's select number 3, comma, array. We will select the whole data from top to bottom. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. So the aggregate ignored subtotal and aggregate from here. Let's go to top. What sum total and sub will do? Let's delete our error from here. Subtotal is also giving me the same result, but the result of sum is totally different. Means sum is adding these cells also. But in case of any error, subtotal will not work. So whenever your data is vast and you have got some errors and hidden rows or hidden cells, you can use aggregate. Let's see another example. Round. Over here we have got our monthly sales. In first scenario, I want to round the figure close to 2. In second scenario, I want whole number. In third scenario, I want close to 10. And in fourth scenario, I want close to 100. Let's go to empty cell or blank cell and insert the function of round plus or equal to round bracket open number. Monthly sales will be our number, comma, number digits. How many number digits we want? We want close to two. So I'll put two over here. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. My result is looking same. Let's go to sales and insert few digits. Enter. Now we can see it rounded up close to two. I'll select all and we'll press control one. We'll go to accounting. In case you want to put decimal places, you can. Symbol, I'll select symbol of rupee because I am based in India and we'll do OK. Now let's change our sales to whole number. Let's drag this. I'll click over here. We'll go to formula bar. We'll remove two and we'll put zero. Enter. And my figure got converted to whole number. Let's go to third scenario. Over here, I want close to 10. I'll go to formula bar and we'll delete two and we'll put minus one. Enter and see the result. In fourth scenario, I want close to 100. We'll go to formula bar. Over here, I'm not going to delete two. Just before two, I'll put minus. Means minus two and we'll hit enter. And my figure got close to 100. In monthly sales, let's take same figure everywhere and we can see the difference. Let's see next example. EO month or end of the month. Over here, we have got start date and we want end date. For an example, first start date is January 1st or 1st of January 24. So end date will be 31st Jan 24. Over here, we have got few dates of 2024 means 2024 and few dates of later year or years. Let's insert our function or formula over here plus or equal to EO month means end of the month bracket open start date. So our start date will be this cell comma months. How many months we want? We want zero months. So I'll put zero over here. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. So I got my end date. Start date is 1st of Jan and end date is 31st of Jan. Let's drag this down and we got proper result. When we come down, start date is 1st Jan 25, end date is 31st Jan 25. Over here, start date is 1st April 28 and end date is 30th April 28. Let's come to right hand side. Over here, I have got few criteria like I want end date after one month, after two months, after three months, after four months and so on. So what will be the formula? Plus or equal to EO month means end of the month bracket open start date. Start date will be same comma months. How many months I want? So over here, I want one month. I'll put one. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. So I got end date as 29th February. In second scenario, I want after two months. Let's do one thing. Let's remove months from here and then we can give sale reference of these. I'll type one over here, enter. I'll type two and we'll press control E. So I got all my figures. I'll go to first cell. We'll delete one from here and we'll give the cell reference from here, enter. Now we can drag this down and just check the end dates after one month, after two months, after six months, after 10 months, after 12 months. In case you don't want to give cell reference, you can put the figure manually also. Over here it's four months, so I'll put four, enter. And the result is same. Let's see next example. E date means end date, but here is a catch. What EO month was doing for us? It was giving end date of the month means if the start date is 1st of Jan, end date will be 31st of Jan. And what E date is going to do for us? 
let's put our function or formula plus or equal to e date bracket open start date we we'll select this as start date comma months how many months we want in first scenario i just want one month so i'll put one over here we'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter so over here my end date is first of february not 31st of january let's click over here plus or equal to e date bracket open start date start date will be first of february comma months i'll take reference from here we'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter as i told earlier in case you want to put the data manually you can no need to give cell reference now let's drag it down so here we are getting end date as first of april so start date is first march end date first june when we come down start date is first march 27 and end date is first december 27 because we have taken nine months over here now let's use e date with e month and see what result we are going to get plus or equal to e date bracket open start date we we'll select this as start date comma months in first scenario or in first case i want one month so i'll put one we'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter i got some random figure we'll click on top we'll press ctrl one format sales window will open we'll go to date and we'll select a desired date format and we'll do ok we'll align all the things in center now let's put eo month over here we'll go to formula bar eo month means end of the month bracket open we'll come to the end comma months how many months i want let's put zero bracket close enter so we got 29th of february what was the last result it was first of february now we got 29th of february what will happen if I'll remove 0 and we'll put 1, I got 31st of March. So as per your requirement, you can use EO month with E date also. Let's see next example. Work day. I have got my start dates and I just want to count work days. On the right hand side, we have got number of working days and based on these criteria, we have to calculate our work days through start date. We'll click over here, plus or equal to work day. Over here, we get two options, Workday and Workday International. Workday International is more flexible, but let's see Workday first. Start date. This is our start date, comma, days. How many working days we want? In first scenario, I want seven working days, so I'll put seven over here, comma, holidays. This is my holidays list. So I'll select dates from top to bottom. In case you want, you can press shift, control, down arrow key, and your range will be selected. Whenever you will select range of your holidays, please ensure to lock it. So I'll press F4 or function F4 and my range will be locked. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. And we got our result as 10th of January. Means it has ignored Saturdays and Sundays and even my holidays. But what's if Saturday and Sunday both the days are not week offs and I just want to ignore Sunday. Let's insert Workday International over here. Plus or equal to Workday. This time we will select Workday International. Start date. This is my start date. Comma. Days. How many days I want? In second scenario, I want 8 days. So I'll put 8 over here. Comma. As soon as I inserted comma, I got various options. Now it totally depends on our priority. What will be our option? Saturday and Sunday. Sunday, Monday. Monday, Tuesday. And there are various options. In my scenario, it's number 11. Sunday only. Comma. In case you want to include holidays, you can. In case you don't want to include holidays, it's totally up to you. In my case, I'll include holidays. We'll drag this. We'll lock the range. We'll press F4 or function F4 and my range will be locked. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. Let's go on top. So my start date over here is 2nd Jan and end date excluding Sundays is 11th of January. We are getting days automatically because I have inserted the function of text. Let's insert our function or formula once again and this time we will give cell reference from here. Plus or equal to work days. We we'll select work day international start date. This is our start date comma days. In days I'll take reference from here comma weekend. When I come down I get more options and this time I'll keep Friday only comma holidays. It's totally optional but I'll select this close the bracket hit enter in this scenario. I excluded Friday, so we got Sunday over here. Let's drag this and just check Saturdays and Sundays are not ignored, but all the Fridays got ignored. 
Let's see our next example. And our next example is 3D formula. And over here, we want to add data from multiple sheets. When we see the sheets name, we have got our data from January to August. And in summary, I want total sales. If I'll do it manually, means plus or equal to, we'll go to January, we'll click on first date, plus, we'll go to February, we'll click on first date, plus, we'll go to March, we'll click on first date. So this process is going to take longer time. The result will be same, but the process will take longer time, means it will be tedious job. Let's delete this. So what 3D formula is going to do? It will reduce our workload, plus or equal to sum, bracket open. Let's go to January. Click on first date. Press shift and click on last month. In our case, last month is August. So I'll click on August. Just see the formula bar. It created a range from January to August and has taken C6 only as cell reference. Let's close the bracket and hit enter. We got our result. We can drag this down. So I got sales of all the months over here. Let's do some total of this. I'll delete sales from here, plus or equal to sum, bracket open. We'll click on first cell, we'll press shift control, down arrow key. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. We'll go on top and this is my result. Of 3D formula, let's see another example. I'll come to total sales over here, plus or equal to sum, bracket open. Let's go to January and this time I'll select from top to bottom, means from first date to last date. We'll press shift and we'll click on last month. Just check formula bar. We got the range. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. Over here, our result is same. 904035 and over here also 904035. I'll show you one very interesting thing. I'll create copy of August. We'll press alt and we'll drag this to plus sign. My copy got created. When we go to summary, we can see 904035. Let's do one thing. Let's drag August and drop in center. Now let's go to summary and our result got changed. Now it became 990374. Let's remove August from here. Go to summary. It became 904035. So in this way, our function or formula becomes dynamic. Let's see next example. Over here, we have got a sales data. I have got date, employee name, items, quantity and sales. But the catch is, Different employees have got different sales. Even the different items has got different sales. And I have to take out sales, employee wise and item wise. And over here, we can't use sum or subtotal. Even we can't use aggregate over here. So what we can use? We can use sum ifs. Let's put our formula plus or equal to sum ifs bracket open. In sum if we get two options, sum if and sum ifs. Over here, we are using sum ifs sum range this is my sum range in case you want to select from top it can be done but you will have to lock the cells by pressing f4 or function f4 comma criteria range one so over here our criteria is employee names so i'll select employees name from top we'll press f4 or function f4 and my range will be logged comma criteria one so this is criteria range and employee name will be criteria one I'll click on criteria one, that is employee name. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. And we got sales employee wise. We'll drag this down. In the same way, every sales of all the employees can be counted. Let's copy this, control C or command C and paste over here. We got result as zero because our cell reference got changed. I'll undo this, control Z or command Z. We'll click on total sales of first employee. We'll go to formula bar and we'll copy this. Control C or command C. I have copied the formula from formula bar. We'll come over here and we'll paste it. Control V or command V. Enter. In this scenario, my cell reference is not changed. We'll go to formula bar. We'll remove some ifs and we'll type average ifs. Average ifs. And we'll hit enter. So I got average sales of all the employees. We can drag this down. In case you want to use count ifs, the process will be same. Over here, we want sales item wise, but there are two criteria. In first place, I just want sales. And in second place, I want sales after 10th of April 24. Let's insert our function or formula plus or equal to sum ifs 
bracket open sum range this will be our sum range as i told earlier we can select our data from top we'll press f4 or function f4 and the range will be logged comma criteria range 1 earlier our criteria was employee name this time our criteria will be items so i'll select from top we'll press f4 or function f4 and my range will be logged comma criteria 1 item name will be criteria 1 we'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter we can drag this down so we got sales item wise over here also there was only one criteria let's use more than one criteria over here formula will be same plus or equal to sum ifs bracket open sum range this will be our sum range we'll press f4 or function f4 and the range will be logged comma criteria range criteria range will be items names we'll press f4 or function f4 and the range will be logged comma criteria 1 criteria 1 will be items name comma as soon as we inserted comma we can see criteria range 2 and our second criteria is sales after 10th of april 24 so in this case the criteria range will be dates so i'll select dates from top we'll press f4 or function f4 and the range will be logged comma criteria 2 so what is criteria 2 this date 10th april 24 it should be sales after 24 means greater than 10th april so i'll put double inverted comma greater than in case you want to put equal to you can let's put equal to also double inverted comma close and i want sales after 10th of april so i'll click over here we'll press f4 or function f4 and my cell will be logged we'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter so i got sales after 10th of april we'll drag this down what will happen if I delete my dates? Sales got zero. We'll undo this. Let's delete all the dates before 10th. Delete. Enter. And the figure is not changed. If I delete more dates, figure will automatically change. I'll undo this. Let's see our next example. If over here I have got various expenses and their amount. And if the amount is more than 5000, it's over budget. So over here we can use if plus or equal to if bracket open logical test. So if the amount will be greater than 5000. So I'll click on first amount is greater than greater than what greater than 5000 comma. If it will be greater than 5000 what we want to show we want to show over budget. So I'll put double inverted comma over budget double inverted comma close. Just notice one thing over here. When I inserted figure, I haven't put double inverted comma. But as soon as I inserted text, I took text inside double inverted commas. Comma. If the amount will not exceed 5000, we don't want to show anything. Means we want cell to be blank. So in Excel, for blank, we use double inverted comma twice. So I'll put double inverted comma twice for blank. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. First amount is over budget. Let's drag this down. So these are the cells where I exceeded my budget, means it got over budget. In case you don't want to show your cells blank, you want to show it as zero, you can go to formula bar and just between two double inverted commas, put zero, enter, and you can drag this down. In case you want to put some text, it can be done. Just click between two double inverted commas and type whatever you want in budget, enter. Now drag this down. See, over budget, in budget, over budget, over budget, in budget. Let's see our next example. We look up. I have got a sales figure and I have got sales as per item codes. But I don't know which items are these. I can't copy and paste this data. Over here, we can see TT01 that is item code 1, TT02 item code 2. And in third place, we got TT12 that is item 3. But when we come to right hand side, all the item codes are in a proper sequence and this data can be in next sheet also. So over here we will use VLOOKUP plus or equal to VLOOKUP bracket open lookup value. In both the sheets what's common thing and common thing is item code and whatever will be common it will be our lookup value. So let's click over here comma table RA from where we want to take our data we want to take our data from this. In case you want to select the range, you can, but I always prefer to select from top because if in future your range increases, you'll not have to change your formula again and again. 
will press F4 of function F4 and the range will be logged. Comma. Column index number. These are our columns. But we are not going to count from beginning. Our selection of VLOOKUP started from item code. So item code will be column index number 1 or column number 1. And items name will be column index number 2 or column number 2. So I'll put 2 over here. Comma. I got two options. True and false. True is for approximate match and false is for exact match. In case you want to select this, you can. Otherwise, 1 is for true and 0 is for false. So I'll put 0 over here. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. I will drag this down. Just see TT012 item is Oppo Mobile. And over here also, it's the same thing. I'll put some color. What will happen if we will change the sequence? I'll copy this, Control C and Command C. And we'll paste over here. Control V or Command V. Enter. Just see the item names. Everywhere we can see single item name. Whenever you are using VLOOKUP, you'll have to ensure that your lookup value is same. Sequence of lookup value can be up and down. Let's see next example and that will be our last example. Trim. Over here also we are going to use VLOOKUP. Formula or function will be same. Plus or equal to VLOOKUP. Bracket open. Lookup value. Item code will be our lookup value. Comma. Table array. This is our table array. We will select from top and we'll press F4 of function F4 and our range will be logged. Comma. Column index number. Items are in column number 2. So I'll put 2 over here. Comma 0 for exact match. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. Over here we inserted proper function or formula. But then also we are getting error. So what may be the reason? I'll drag this down. In some places I'm not getting error. And in some places I'm getting error. So what may be the reason of our errors? It may be our lookup value and our lookup value is item code. But all the item codes are looking proper. Let's click on first item and we can see some space over here. Means just before item code and just after item code also we can see some space. So what can be done? We will have to remove all the extra spaces and that can be done through trim. I'll show the function of trim over here plus or equal to trim. Bracket open. We'll click on first item code. We'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. All the extra spaces from beginning or from the end got removed. I'll drag this down. Now what we can do? We can copy this and can paste over here. Or let's do one thing. Go to items. Let's delete B3. That was lookup value. And select our lookup value from here. Let's see our VLOOKUP is going to work or not. Enter. It worked. And it worked same way as X lookup works. Because I have taken lookup value from here. Not from here. So it's an amazing thing. Or if you don't want to copy paste and change the cell reference, one more thing can be done. I'll undo this. We'll click just before lookup value and we'll put trim. Bracket open. We'll take my lookup value in bracket. Now I'll hit enter. I'll drag this down and see it worked. So with VLOOKUP, we can use trim also if there's issue with item codes. So these are our few functions for accountants. I'll provide link of the file in description box. In case you want to download, you can. I'm sure you must have loved the video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you soon with a new topic. Till then, bye-bye.